what is elevation of boiling point and why do I have something called colligative properties written down at the bottom of this video. We'll talk about all that. What is boiling though in the first place? Do you remember? When the vapor pressure of a pure liquid becomes the atmospheric pressure, then we say that that pure liquid boils. What if you don't have a pure liquid? What if it's a solution? Well, even then, if the solution vapor pressure becomes equal to atmospheric pressure, we say that it boils. I've said two different things. Keep them in mind as we as the video progresses. When the temperature increases of the solution, let's just talk about solution right now, the pressure would also increase exponentially. Hmm. Taking that as a statement of fact, we'll see, we'll see. Where is all this useful in life? Let's talk about that. When you are at a hill, high altitude, water boils easily. If you try to cook, food doesn't cook really well. So what do you do? And why does this happen in the first place? We'll address both of those things. As you go high up altitude wise, atmospheric pressure reduces. So you can heat to a lower temperature to get to that same pressure that needs to get to the atmospheric pressure. So this P0, which is, let's say the pure solvent right now, it's just water, right? When that becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure, that's when boiling happens. So now I have a lower P to get to, yeah? That is why water boils at a lower temperature. But that's not good for food. Hmm. So what do we do here? What's the fix for all of this? I think if you live in a hilly area, you know, we add a little bit of salt and food tastes better, cooks easily. What on earth is that about? Salt, common salt, NaCl. It's a non-volatile solute. Just like glucose or sugar, you don't really put that in water to cook. But we are going to focus on this. Non-volatile solutes put in volatile solvents like water or something else. Before you continue with this video, I think it would be good to revise a couple of things. Yeah, Properties that depend only on number of particles, they are known as colligative properties. If you think this is a little random, don't worry. This makes a lot of sense. We'll get back to it. Okay. And, 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 relative lowering of vapor pressure depends only on number of particles. You'll see something at the bottom of my screen pop up right now. If one is the solvent, two is the solute, then delta P1, the lowering of vapor pressure with respect to the vapor pressure of the pure solvent at a given temperature, P1 naught is going to be equal to the X2, which is mole fraction of the solute itself. I'm repeating this a little slowly because this is done in detail in the RLVP or relative lowering of vapor pressure video. You can check that out. But a bit of a recap that I think would be good. And this uh, approximation holds good when you have N2 to be much lesser than N1. All right, back to this video. Why are we talking about adding salt to non-volatile solute? Let's look at this. Remember, I started off saying that, yeah, pressure increases exponentially when you increase the temperature for a liquid. If you were to plot that on a graph, let's humor me let's do that yeah? we don't have to look at equations let's say we just have some values of pressure and temperature we plot it on a graph so for a pure solvent like just water this is how the graph would look like as soon as i add a fixed amount of non-volatile solute fixed amount right i'm not changing that i'm changing the temperature what happens the moment i do this this would drop a little bit to some value right because there is a lowering of vapor pressure and sure we can also calculate relative lowering but lowering happens because i also and all of that if i change the temperature maybe at a different temperature lowering happens here as, a, here as well another temperature lowering happens here as well another temperature lowering happens here as well now you can see what is happening here a new line is being traced that line is that of not the pure solvent but the solute and the solvent together, which would be now the solution, okay? At every temperature, the pressure of the solution would be lower than that of the pure solvent. That is the biggest takeaway over here, which is why I'm slowing down the way that I'm talking about this because it's important. Okay, so solute plus solvent line looks like this. Hmm, okay, okay, okay. And what did we start this video off with? What is boiling? When the atmospheric pressure is equal to the pressure of the, I said, solvent. Now let's call it system, solution, system, system. Thermodynamic speaking is a system. So let's say that atmospheric pressure happens to be one atmosphere. It could be any value. Let's say here it is one atmosphere. You see, I've drawn this line. Something weird is happening. This line intersects this at two different points altogether. What is that about? That is the elevation and boiling point that you see right here. Yeah, you'll see this arrow that I'm going to draw. Yeah. This whole solvent became a solution and because of that, the boiling point increased. This is it. 
this is the elevation of boiling point that we were talking about we practically experience it by adding salt and being able to cook food easily we will look at how to figure this out mathematically right now okay so if i were to call this tv naught and just tv or tv dash then the increase in boiling point the elevation would be given by delta tv equal to tv dash or just tv minus tv naught depends on different textbooks we could write different things let's do a bit of math around it this property depends only on the number of particles because well it is a consequence of relative lowering of vapor pressure which also depends only on number of particles this is an important idea probably the single most important idea in this video so far hmm. okay now this delta tb depends on number of particles of what of the solute and also the mass of the solvent take it as a statement of fact right now the number of uh, solute particles that's fine the mass of solvent is a little beyond the scope of what we are discussing right now but what is in the scope is think about a concentration term that makes sense over here pause the video if you like molality with the l that's what i want to talk about here all right so let's do a quick math here if delta tv is proportional to m i put a proportionality constant kb right here yeah what is m for the sake of mm, a quick revision it's the moles of solute in one kilogram of solvent not solution this is important okay what is kb again this is a little bit of theory you don't have to figure out how to derive it but if you like the idea you can check that out as well in a different video this is known as the molar ebuloscopic constant and it's got a couple of other names as well so okay i've given you what this constant is and by the way tb is boiling point it says delta h vapor, vaporization r is the universal gas constant m1 is the molar mass of the solute it's the usual stuff nothing complicated but it looks a little scary because got a lot of things there don't worry if you have questions this value is usually given to you or you probably have to find it out in some different thing okay so one is solvent two is solute just substituting this thing right over here i'm going to erase this arrow so that it does not scare you but that's it yeah molality is being written right in the top right corner now if i measure the mass of the solvent in gram i multiply it with thousand why did i do that because thousand gram is one kilogram right gram gram get cancelled out and what you have is this be careful about stuff like this i know it seems like baby stuff that i'm doing for you but hey the first time you're doing this do it properly and carefully so you don't ever question key why is this thousand there and what is this happening in a numerical so this is the formula that maybe you've seen in books and in questions that you're gonna have to solve so this is going to help you do what practically speaking it helps you calculate if you know delta tb you can figure out what is the molar mass of the what is two what is two quickly two is the solute or delta tb itself or m itself one variable one equation this is what is going to help you the most all right that was it on elevation of boiling point which happens to be an awesome colligative property we have some more in store for you